everybody. So if you have a takeout today, is I am amazing. So that's great. <laughs> <laughs> so I want people engagement. I know I, they always give me this uh, slot to speak because I have to wake you up. So that will gonna be good. We are gonna speak about community, something that I really care about. But this time it's a little bit different because uh, clearly OSG or software doesn't exist, uh, or OS software doesn't exist without a community of volunteer often behind that. But I feel like we are already sort of an established community, so I want to uh, ask questions to our panelists about uh, how it takes to actually nur nurture a uh, community, to maintain it, like what kind of ideas you have to have, what kind of support you need, uh, how you deal with burnout, lack of time, life, uh, all this stuff. So that's mm, my intake here. So I would like you all to start uh, with a little easy slide or um, not quiz, but whatever, um, opinions. <laughs> Can't remember the name. So can we have our slide or codes up? So very easy, I would like to know how many of you actually are part, active member of our community, OS community. Like, here we are. So while you are signing up uh, and uh, participate, I have a lot of po polls, that's the name, I have a lot of polls for you. But in the meantime, I want to introduce our panelists. I'm really, really happy to have them around. They are the remarkable person. And they are the one that built a community and they carry on uh, um, actually being very active uh, community. So in total, not alphabetical order, but it's the oldest, uh, who was the first one to send me the idea? <laughs> <laughs> no shame here. <laughs> I'm not looking at anybody here. So I would like to introduce you, John. I probably doesn't need an introduction, but he wrote a lovely one, uh, so yeah, it is. So John has been working with Open Geospatial Community ever since his first Force 4G in 2011. I was not born that year yet. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, he started GeoGeek uh, uh, first, we all love, in 2050, so that he could find fellow open source GIS nerd to play with. A couple of years later, yeah, no, play with in a nerdy way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I got serious, okay. A couple of years later, he somehow, some, somehow got involved in organizing a big regional Phosphor G in Melbourne, the one that Alex was speaking about, uh, kicking everything up, and found a huge community looking for a way to connect. In his work, at Ma Mammoth Geospatial, John is on a mission to win hearts and minds to, for open source by consulting, teaching QGIS, and providing support to GIS users. Thanks. He believes that community isn't something that you build, but it's definitely something that you can nurture. So, thank you, John. Then we have uh, Violaine. Yeah. yeah, come on, come on. <laughs> Woohoo! Okay. Violaine, thank you, so second one for the bio. Violaine is an active OSM and OS defender since 2015. She started her GIS career thanks to the French OSM community in Lyon and has been advocating for OS since and even traveling the world apparently. <laughs> so she was particularly involved in OSM uh, um, community while working in Madagascar through Cartong, an NGO dedicated to GIS for humanitarian aid. She trained people using OSM, in using OSM, and also in becoming professor trainers themselves so they can build the community. And she organized their first OSM Open Day. That's great, I think. Since she moved in French Polynesia five years ago, she did and still does her best to contribute to the growth of OSM and OS project and support uh, a local community through functional meeting, a OSM project, Oh, and something else that I forgot. Sorry, but <laughs> Violaine, I must have cut your bill. So she's very involved on the OSM community in Tahiti. She now develops the data expertise of OPU Agency, which is a town planning agency in Tahiti. Then we have Alex. 
Do we really have to introduce Alex? <laughs> he put a lot of weird nerdy words in his bio, so I'll try my best. <laughs> So, Alex, I've been learning how to participate in no open source, source software, that's not a nerdy word, um, communities for over 15 years, uh, from seeking Debian. He stole advice on IRC. I would like to know how many of you are being user of IRC? <laughs> okay, you're all old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my husband says that I was an IRC administrator in my youth. It's like, yeah, shh, don't tell anybody anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it's not cool anymore. <laughs> Anyways, then it gets worse. He <laughs> 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 participates to compiling wireless drivers on Ubuntu forums. <laughs> and to be a um, reasonably prolific participant of GIS Stack Exchange, thank you. Evolving the Open Data Cube community and helping to start up OSC Oce Oceania, as you just heard. He doesn't see himself as a person who creates communities only, <laughs> okay? He just creates a community. <laughs> <laughs> but as more as a sustained contributor and an, ele an enable of participation. Alex uh, runs a sma small open geospatial company with specialization in health observation and big data and volunteers his time as a board member for OSC Oceania, Oceania and uh, Health Observation Australia. Yeah. And then the last one, because it's the best, uh, not because it was the last, give me <laughs> the I think if you've been around today, you have heard from Lenny, we had a, a beautiful speech about her career and her life as a just special person this morning at the Women in Fashion Breakfast, not Women in Breakfast, I always say, <laughs> and a very interesting talk this afternoon. So, Lani is a person that has a 48 hour day, one of the few person that can cram a lot of things in their life. I'm so envious. She is a disaster risk reduction consultant with the United Nations with expertise in geospatial and climate change in the Pacific region. She's also currently pursuing her postgraduate diploma in islands and ocean stewardship from the University of the South Pacific in, the, in Fiji. She is the co-founder of the OSM Fiji. I'm taking a big, big breath here because she does a lot of volunteer. She's a board member of the Pacific GIS and Remote Sensing Council and a geospatial insight support team advisory panel for the Bill and Melinda Gates uh, Foundation. You might have heard of them. She's also a um, Rezo Associate, uh, aiming to amplify the voices of professional women working in the global geospatial arena. So a round of applause for all of them. <laughs> and let's have a look. I was expecting better from you guys. <laughs> So yeah, there's something here. So I hope after this panel, maybe the 41% they say, no, my change the idea. Okay, so my first question is uh, for actually all of you, because probably at least the 41% of the audience is asking like, why are you doing that? Why are you an active member and often like one of the principal member of a, a person that drive the other in a, OS community. So that's for, for all, all of you. So Fiore, you start. Okay. Easy, no pressure. <laughs> okay. Do you hear me? Yes, yes that's lovely. So, um, yes, why? Um, uh, so, well, yeah, I think it's uh, mostly about the values of the OpenStreetMap project. So before I really engage into the community, I was more using the data for studies, uh, urban planning studies, actually. Um, yeah, uh, after that, I got fired. <laughs> so no more money in the agency. <laughs> so well, I, I just started, so I, I was the first who left. So uh, yeah, I was thinking, well, uh, I want to do something useful and uh, OpenStreetMap project is crazy. There is crazy values, and yeah, you know, uh, we speak a lot about uh, accessibility of the data. Uh, I think uh, the inclusiveness 
all this is uh, very important. Um, yeah, uh, I felt that there were a lot of uh, potentiality on the power people can gain uh, using the data, contributing to it, and making great application, great uh, activism, movement, or this kind of stuff. So it's a time when I uh, joined the uh, Carto NG in French. Carto NG, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, no, sorry. Everybody uh, does the same. So, yeah, so I took the opportunity to uh, share the knowledge about OpenStreetMap project in Madagascar, where there is a lot of need of free tools, free data, and many uh, human resources. But, uh, yeah, no. Well, they, there were not so many uh, independent person using the, well, there were no at all people <coughs> using the ecosystem for work. So, yeah, and uh, it started this way. Thank you. So and two words is inclusivity and empowerment for me. That's, that's very important words. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get to inclusivity later, I think. Alex, why do you do it? Thank you. <laughs> The reason why I do it is what I said at the start of the, um, my bio that I wrote, which is that I sought help on these forums for doing things. I started doing open source stuff because I uh, used to game a lot and I went to a, a, um, uh, a LAN party and my internet browser wasn't working very well. And the, the, the other nerd, the, more, the uber nerd, couldn't help me unruin my internet explorer and said, just use Firefox. And I was like, oh, what's that? And I started using it. It's open source. And I started saying, all right. Well, I want to use more open source, and I installed in Ubuntu, which means, well, I installed Debian, which means you actually need to understand what you're doing. And so I had to ask some other uber nerds how to do stuff. So in asking for advice and receiving advice, you learn how to ask questions, and then I started answering other questions and helping other people to learn. And I don't know why, but I just kept going, kept helping people to, to, to be empowered and to be able to do these things that, that I wanted to do, and somebody taught me, just handing it on. Yeah, thank you. So why we, before passing to Lani, it's time for you to al start asking questions. Ah, yeah. And I see a lot of anonymous questions. Come on, guys. Can, can you put your first name at least? Like, I'm sure there will be a lot of saying first name, so I won't point at you, except if I know you. <laughs> so then I can see we, you can start voting. And uh, in like uh, a moment when we finish this, uh, there's uh, another poll to, to come. So when we finish this. Lani, why are you doing all of these things? <laughs> uh, okay, can you hear me? Uh, so, uh, from my point of view, like uh, just a deep passion for just spatial technology, and also trying to foster a community of like-minded people. Like um, for us of uh, OSM Fiji, that's actually how we started and established. That's why we're still here after two years of starting OSM Fiji. So it's uh, coming together of uh, like uh, like-minded individual and that has the passion for geospatial and also on open data and also open software and yeah and trying to build a community in, uh, like what alex said like uh, so alex and john have taught us a lot so that's the same thing we're trying to do here in fiji so and that's how you build a community up Matka. okay thank you um uh, for me my personal reason uh, vln you mentioned the word values um, and I think like my experience was going to FOS4G in the United States in 2011. Um, I'm not from the US, I'm from Canada, just to be clear, but um, uh, going to that FOS4G, um, I, I went because I was interested in, in what I was seeing on the internet. Um, it seemed like there was a community of people with similar values, similar interests. And when I went to that conference, um, I found like I really found my people and uh, um, it was a really welcoming environment and I felt like I was welcomed into a community. So for so that was my personal experience of uh, becoming a member of, of this community. Um, and I guess the reason I'm motivated to sort of carry on doing what I'm doing is because I want other people to have the same experience. I want, um, I want that to keep going. And I think, I think that's what it takes is people who, I mean, this, I, I feel like that's what the open source is all about is, is people um, are motivated by finding people with shared values, um, f feeling that sense of belonging, feeling it and then feeling motivated to con contribute based on that. So that's that's what it was for me. That, that's great. So carry on on this very deep uh, uh, conversation. I get the first uh, most voted uh, 
um, question from the audience. So why does this community seems way more fun than the Esri community? <laughs> <laughs> does someone want to answer that? And can we have the second poll after this, please? Come on, why? Why do you think we are better than the others? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I'll, I'll have a quick go. So I think our community is full of people who want to share what they do and talk about what they do and hear what other people are doing and be excited by that. And it's not motivated by, by, by business and money. And I think that we're actually really lucky to have the sponsors that we do as well who really don't want, they don't see it as getting something back from their money. They see it as, see it as a contribution to the community because they want to support the folks that are building the things that they get value out of. So it's, so it's a different vibe in that way, the different motivation for being, the different values, like John said, for being here, I think. Do you agree? Any other idea? Yeah, I think it's mostly that. We have fun, we have cookies. <laughs> <laughs> Come to the dark side. Okay, <laughs> back to the question. So. I actually have a question for everybody on the next poll and for you too. We are speaking about trying to build, but especially maintain a healthy community. So what is a healthy community for all of you? So what are the characteristics, the main characteristics? So what do you think? What's an healthy community and how we get to an healthy community? Do we have an healthy community? Oh, that's a difficult one. Eh? There's three <laughs> questions in one. <laughs> Someone they want to take it? Why are we waiting for some cool words coming up already? Diversity, openness, uh, effective communication. I think we need to, to look at our communication here. <laughs> so why are we all getting our ideas on? Someone want to effect, Lani, John, your end. I go for it. Go for it. So I agree with the communication stuff. Like uh, when you are in a healthy uh, relationship with others, we, you speak with each other and everything, so there's an open communication space and this needs to be um, protected and maintained and it's the way we can be inclusive and so on and so on. So if you say that people are not talking to each other or are afraid to speak on the mailing list or this kind of stuff, it's a good sign that there's something to do about communication. <laughs> <laughs> That's so a very good yeah. point. Yeah. I like the communication. Yes. Yeah. Someone else? Um, yeah, I think that's a really good point. Um, also, um, I'm think like I, I mentioned values before. I guess um, a community where values are visible, where they're articulated, so that people actually have the opportunity to understand whether they identify with those values, whether it's something they want to belong to. Um, um, and I guess also just that, that aspect of, of being welcoming so that people do sort of, when they put their hands up and say, you know, identify this community, maybe I can be a part of it, um, they're actually welcomed in. And that's not just necessarily saying like, hey, we're an inclusive, welcoming community, but also like um, um, communicating, um, you know, having open communication channels and um, e even like having things for people to do. You know, identifying, th these are things that volunteers can put their hand up and, and join in and, and do and participate. So finding, finding ways for people to, uh, to get involved and, and having those be sort of discoverable as well. That's, that's very good. So I'm just having a look at that. There's like a lot on that. It's like probably the one is more what is like diverse, so div diversity and probably inclusion too. How do you feel about that? Lani, do you feel we are inclusive uh, enough? Like we had a great speech this morning by Carol about inclusive, yeah, so I, you are eating. <laughs> Everybody look at Carol. <laughs> but it was a really, uh, a really great introduction about uh, inclusivity, about how people don't think like we have these unconscious bias. Uh, most of us have the right passport as they can go from one country to another without problems. So we have, most of us have the right skin color. So let's say that, you know, so are we conscious enough to include the others or not? What are your experience like? Uh, okay, so uh, for inclusiveness, yeah, from uh, I think 
from the past three years to we are post for GS, uh, Oceania's come along and Oceania. I think um, it is better compared to how the first time we got introduced to it, especially like, uh, I mean, personally for me, uh, like I felt well because of the community. There's friendly faces and people willing to teach you. And um, for that, and also um, uh, been trying to actually communicate better and connect with the locals. So for the past two years, I've hear Ale heard Alex said that they tried to host the uh, post for G uh, at uh, Suva. And uh, hopefully, yeah, and last year we successfully did uh, combine. Uh, so um, I think that is the way towards inclusiveness. And uh, also uh, being able to have uh, uh, other representative from different diverse uh, ethnic groups in the board. And yeah, and I think we stand at a very good place when it comes to inclusiveness for post for Geo So I, um, so I'm working in um, Fiji at the moment, in the Pacific, really. Okay. And I, I called a friend and asked her about, um, to help me sort of prepare to, to go into that community. And um, so we have created a forum here and we try very hard to make Atlani and others feel welcome here in New Zealand, in our community. But for us to think about, something for us to think about is that if we hold a conference in Suva, in Vanuatu, uh, that we are going into their culture. We are not taking our culture over there and being inclusive. We are going in and we should be respectful of, no, in fact, we're not, not be respectful, but we should be ready to be uncomfortable in their culture because I really appreciate that you come and it's uncomfortable. I'm sure it is. It's different, you know? And, I, and, I, and I'm really trying hard to, to understand and to listen and to, to appreciate going into the Pacific culture. So, so when, if, when we hold another conference um, in the Pacific, I encourage you to go and to be uh, vulnerable. Okay, November, Pacific GIS conference. Well, I say not us, but <laughs> <laughs> community. <laughs> so, and apparently, John is one uh, fa alofa. Alofa, the person with good intention but bad personalities. <laughs> <laughs> and probably Violen is too because you have been living in a Pacific island. So do you feel like we can all become fa alofa with our amazing personalities? <laughs> is that difficult to do that or just need to be open? <laughs> You are the fall of <laughs> it's not me, like, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I don't know how to answer that question. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. So we have other questions, uh, very well voted from Head, thanks. So put in your names, I can see you guys now. So is making, making money in a, and around open source communities a good or a bad thing? Discuss. <laughs> well, uh, there is a, happens to be a panel tomorrow afternoon on this very topic. I think more money, more grants. Violin, <laughs> 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 Danny, do you have? So is the question about, this is Ed, is this you? So is the question yeah. about um, making yeah. money around open source communities or using open source? No, no, around the community, not, not the, not, not, no, we are not hijacking Alex panel yet. <laughs> Just. If I can try and paraphrase for the video, Ed said that there are governments or commercial companies that are building a solution with open source and in that way saving money. Um, is that appropriate? Is that okay? Should they be doing something else? Is that, is that roughly it? What are the economics or the impact of that in the open source community? And I, and I think it's an opportunity there to say you are 
you are reducing your software license fees, let's consider contributing back to those communities and, and being a good um, open source software citizen. And it's not just writing code, but it's filing issues appropriately and documentation and all the other so sort of soft things. Um, so I think it's interesting you use the word economy. Um, I think of open source communities as being an, a kind of economy of their own, like but not less of a financial economy, more of like a social economy. Um, and I think, you know, like when, when money gets involved, it has a lot of potential to do a lot of damage. Um, so I actually, I think it sort of, uh, you know, brings up, for me, it brings up the topic of risk factors about what, you know, what can, what can cause damage in your open source community and how do you guard yourself against that? Um, I mean, I think it's a, it's a big complicated question. I don't actually really have any good answers for that, but um, um, I think it's like, I think you really need to be conscious of what are people's and organizations' motivations when they want to get involved in your community. Um, I think we get, like as Alex mentioned, spot, we're, you know, we're really fortunate um, at conferences like this that we usually have sponsors who are um, motivated by supporting the community and wanting to help it thrive. Um, but I, I just think you just need to be conscious of what people's and organizations' motivations are. So is there anybody in the audience that have, uh, like, we want to discuss this point? It's been very well brought uh, today. So someone else want to add something? Come on, guys. I know, I know you fall asleep. There was a lot of good tweets, but yeah, <laughs> it's important. And we have a microphone. And we have a microphone now. Which I'm going to give to Ed because he's going to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, if you don't have any other inputs, can we launch the next poll? Yes. Yes. Okay, I will just, <laughs> yeah, I'm uh, just giving you a bit of my experience because I started as a food volunteer and doing some NGO work, then independent work, then as a staff in an organization, all of one open street map. And so I uh, understand the question. And I think it's very difficult to have a nice post, well, uh, the posture, I don't know if you get that, yes. Okay, the posture is very difficult to, ha to have a proper one when you start to get money. Uh, people start to watch at you uh, like, uh, you are a volunteer, you are not a volunteer, who are you, what are you doing? And I think the most important part is uh, about uh, respecting the values of the project and uh, respecting the community. So when there is a big organization doing some stuff with OpenStreetMap, and well, in OpenStreetMap we've got a lot of uh, disputes about massive imports, for example. All this kind of stuff needs to, me uh, needs to be uh, uh, in face in French. It works. I don't know if, if it works in English, but uh, it needs to be okay with the community to do it this way. You cannot just do something because uh, you, you want to do it. You use a common good. So there is some rules and some expectatives. So this is it for me. I just want to say that there are some stuff to respect. And yes. Yeah. Very good. Very important. So let's move on. We have like an exit poll about what people think uh, uh, on uh, maintaining a community. But what I would li like to ask you, based on that and these results, you know, inclusivity is getting big. I would like to ask you what, for you, what you can do, what we can do for maintaining the interest and the involvement of people. So that's what people would like to have, I suppose, in a thriving community, what we can do to maintain and even welcome new people, like involve more people. So what do you think are the main challenges too, to actually maintain the involvement of people on a community, to not make it stale, like we want to grow, but then there's always a plateau, I suppose. Lani, would you like to reply because you've been quite quiet for the last <laughs> couple of days? <laughs> I'm watching you all. <laughs> <laughs> and you all. So the challenges of trying to maintain that. Yeah, like uh, people are looking for inclusivity, social combination, involvement, commitment, but how do we do that? Uh, if you have time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, like maintaining, like what I've said before, like uh, getting everyone involved, especially for the whole Oceania region. Yeah. yeah, so including them and also getting them which makes it very important for them. Uh, How do we do that? 
how do you how do you involve people or maintain their interest? It's like someone can sign up and say, oh, that's great for the first month, and then I completely forget I was even a member. <laughs> oh, so my main is trying to get the community engaged, like uh, being active and be, uh, participating. So uh, mainly like uh, organizing events, uh, and also uh, like we've done in the past is actually host uh, some an event every month. So you actually have this group, and also like uh, having better communication, like um, you might uh, so like for the Pacific region, there um, a lot of people are on Facebook than on those other social networks. So that's. Uh, a tool that you can actually use to communicate all your events, keep your people and actually get new members in. And also like uh, introducing them to universities, uh, creating um, groups of like uh, from OSN Fiji, uh, Bonara Vid was the new governor of OSM. So that's like a university group of OSM based at the University of the South Pacific. So from uh, what they've learned from OSM Fiji, they've started doing it at uh, the local level, at the university level. And there are people being recruited like new semesters. And hopefully it's something that they would incorporate into the university curriculum maybe in the future. So yeah, participation and communication, active participation also. And trying just to keep it going. Like, uh, you know, and yeah, and mostly having a sh strong social connections like um, maybe we will just come and meet up for socialization workshop or something with someone like what we currently do at all the uh, conferences. Just meet up for a Talanoa, get to know the people, have a better social bond. So you keep everyone bonding and actually you keep the community active. And whenever there's opportunities, there's always something going up for training and so do you think having in-person meeting helps more? Than yes, I actually believe in in-person meeting than having it online. <laughs> yeah, because uh, even like uh, during the pandemic, uh, like we've been meeting online, but when once we actually met in person, like our strong got stronger, because yeah. finally you've got to talk to a person and get bonding. Yeah. Someone else want to add? Just, yeah, I totally agree, um, in-person events, but also you, you said about keeping it going. Um, I mean, like, um, so in, in Perth, we run this GeoGeeks meetup group, and one of the things that's really worked well for us is having some consistency with how, like, frequently we meet. We try to keep it going um, so that, you know, if somebody can't do it this month because they're, um, they, have, they have to look after their kids or they have to, whatever, they've got a meeting, whatever, they can, they can make the next one around, and so, um, they know they can, and so there's, there's like, it's not just a one-off, oh, oh, I missed it, I'm not really involved. It's like, oh, it's okay, I missed it, I can I can get to the next one, I'm still part of this community, I'm still interested in this community, that kind of thing. Okay, so next question. Oh, that's a long line question. Okay, open source software for geospatial can be fragmented. What can we do to focus our efforts to have bigger positive impact? I haven't understood the question much, but I'm sure you do. Someone want to take a <laughs> Don't look at me like that. I, <laughs> I think I disagree with the fundamental premise of the question, Nick, in that the strength of it is that it is kind of emergent. <laughs> like something, something like GDO had a lot of competitors for a while, and it emerges as the strongest thing, and it becomes the infrastructure. And GDO and Proj weren't developed together, but eventually they become merged together because it's it's like a, yeah, like that, that emergent property, that kind of organic um, nature of open source, I think is its strength, rather than having some kind of top-down control of it. I don't know if others disagree with me there. I, I wouldn't necessarily disagree, but I'm um, take, taking another read of the question. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I can see where you're coming from. It's fragmented. There are lots of different projects. They may or may not relate to each other, connect to each other, but um, um, I mean, I think, uh, for me, like the, the fact that it even exists is sort of a testament to the strong community behind um, open source software. And so, I mean, what can we do to focus our efforts? Um, probably a million things. I can think of maybe a couple of them, but it's, it's a, you know, having events like this, getting people together and also just like fostering that strong sense of community, getting people to, you know, giving people the opportunity to know each other and have these conversations and stuff, I think is 
um, the number one thing that comes to my mind. But um, there are probably all kinds of other things, maybe some other people have some ideas about that, I'm not sure. Can I just emphasize the barn raising that happened a few years ago, which was an effort to fund <coughs> a very much needed refactor of, of Seed Allen Prod. And we all like to, um, to, to uh, criticize the gorilla of GIS, but Esri, Safe Software, LIMS, and like a couple of dozen other organizations put real money into um, building the foundations of the open source geospatial software ecosystem in Australia. So from time to time, we really do do a co co coordinated, consolidated effort at making things better. Thank you. So let's go to another question. I actually like the anonymous one. Sorry, Amish, I'll get to yours after. <laughs> so building and sustaining a community can be difficult. So how do you avoid burnout and ensure burn out, I suppose, there are others to continue your work. That's quite a question. Anyone? <laughs> well, uh, burnout is when there is just one person uh, doing all the work, I guess. So you need to have uh, more than one person doing all the work. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very logical <laughs> conclusion. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so here it's yeah. okay, there's uh, more than one. <laughs> well, I guess uh, at the start you need to be uh, on a posture, not as a leader, but maybe as a fa facilitator. Like you, you help people to, to engage in the community instead of doing all the work. And yeah, this kind of stuff, I guess. Well, this is it for me. <laughs> Any other? Um, have a to-do list and ask people to help you if you have too much to do. Um, share the load. Yeah, there you go. So do you ever felt like you were the only one doing actually something? I know it's a bad feeling, but it can happen. So I, I've, I've not very good at this part of it. I'm not part good at this part of building communities. I, I've run Geo Rebels for a while, and I sort of asked people to help, but I hoped that they would just stand up and help. This is in Hobart in Tasmania. And I stopped a few years ago, and they just stopped. And I've sort of got the headspace to run one in a few weeks and got lots of people coming along. Um, but I need to work and get better at this part of, of building a, a small crew of people who I can get a task list and <laughs> get them to help me so I can, I can learn from you, John. <laughs> so that now we get into Amish one, is actually how do you introduce more people in your community? And I would like to add how to make them active in your community. How, how do you do this? <laughs> Lenny, how do you do that? You have a lot of communities. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, for me, it's just about communication and information sharing. Like, um, um, so trying to get information out there, like for your community, like uh, if there are events or things happening, like uh, making them uh, uh, informed of what's happening in your community. Because uh, you lose touch with the whole community once you've stopped uh, sending information across. Yeah. And uh, just being, uh, like, trying to be active as you as a, as a leader or yeah, and the rest will follow. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah, leading by example, it's pretty <laughs> important. <laughs> yeah. So how much time do we have left? Five minutes. See, that's perfect. So I would like, this anybody that want to do more? We have another quite uh, popular question from staff. So is there a register for volunteer trainers to train people in OS Geo tools in areas we need across Oceania? That's actually a very good question. Do we? Is there a register? Do we want to create? Good idea. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah, that's, that's a good thing. <laughs> okay. Put it in uh, your agenda, guys. <laughs> and like, okay, I have like the last question that is usual question, it's sort of like any advice of how to convince people to be an active member, any advice of how to be part of, a, be a good part of a community. And if you want to share some stories, like a nice little story to hand, uh, or even a bad story, like well, why we should be nice, right? We will be nice tonight at the dinner. That would be nice. We like, a, we like to, to hear something from you. 
for all of you, all four of you, in five minutes or one minute, yes. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> So I start. <laughs> Go girl. Uh, yeah, I think uh, the active part, I think uh, some of us talk yeah. about it as a certain point, like um, being in, the, in an active situation on doing stuff on open source and or open street map is a big thing. Like uh, we should push for some uh, concrete project, I think. Like push people to do, uh, go uh, meet some maybe institutions or stuff and build a project and then run it and maybe uh, being more on uh, facilitator roles. I, I believe in the facilitation. Yes. I, uh, I, think, uh, I think we can uh, support people to do stuff without doing it, uh, without uh, pushing too much, like we put the condition and then yeah. that's it. Yeah, yeah. very good. Thank you. This guy, one Sorry. last... Uh, Go before they kick us out. Story time. Story time. Come <laughs> on. <laughs> Follow. Fa no. Fa. Uh, uh, fa. 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 So. Uh, so uh, <laughs> <laughs> we want a story <laughs> from the Fa. I, I heard so it might be a swear word if you say <laughs> it. <laughs> 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 um, okay. So recent um, uh, at GeoGeeks in Perth, we had a, a meetup. Staff used to be one of the GeoGeeks in Perth, but he went and moved to Broome. So um, you can't attend in person, so he asked the question, oh, hey, <laughs> can, you, can you record this so I can actually watch the, the talks? And I was like, yeah, 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 that's too hard. We, we can't do that for just for you. But then somebody else asked too, and I was like, oh, come on, we should do something about it. So, um, so at the last GeoGeeks, we just, it, 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 was, it was cool. We just had the conversation. We asked the question, um, you know, what do you think? Should we be recording these and putting them on the web? And three people put their hands up and said, yeah, I want to help with that. Yeah. Um, so it was like, actually, I thought, um, to me, it was like, oh, cool. This is it's one of those things where, like, if people see this is something I enjoy, this is something I like, this is something I actually want to contribute to potentially, mm -hmm. and then they they saw something they could do, and they were like, yes, I want to do that. So, um, to me, that was that was it in action, just like from beginning to end. Uh, nice. that was, yeah, perfect. So you had to choose which one was doing that, <laughs> and the other two out. No, 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 no. <laughs> just, yeah, you three working out. <laughs> okay, thank you so much. It was a great session. So a round of applause of our panelists, John, Lani, Alex, and Violin, Violin. Okay, thank you. Lighting Talks time.